Look, vectors are a very common term, and they open a whole new world of possibilities. The familiar mathematical concept of direction and magnitude represented as an arrow are one of the most useful data representations. But in case you aren't familiar or just rusty, vectors are arrows used to represent movement, data, and even 2D transformation. The most simplistic definition for a vector is two numbers contained within square brackets. In the linear plane, vectors are most commonly represented as an arrow stemming from the origin. In certain situations, vectors may be moved to outside the origin, though for now we will keep them centered. To notate vectors, we draw two square brackets and put the values in different rows. The horizontal offset is always on top and the vertical is on the bottom. Obviously, vectors are not just set, they can transform, and in a lot of ways too. We got scalar multiplication, a scalar is just one number, the addition of vectors, and matrix multiplication through composition. That's it for vectors on a surface level, and this is enough for the basic understanding of linear algebra. However, just like how the theory of dimensions extends beyond one dimension, the concept of vectors and sets extend beyond this understanding. In fact, the previous definition of a vector as a two-dimensional value isn't even entirely true. Vectors can be generalized to the concept of a first-rank tensor. And now some of you may be wondering what the heck is that? Tensors, just like dimensions, progress from a point to a line to a 2D shape and finally to a 3D solid. The line, or a first-rank tensor, is what we commonly know as the vector. Noticeably, the vector is more than just two values. It can also be defined as something with only one column. This is why 3D vectors are still vectors, and also why vectors are a first-rank tensor. A first-rank tensor is kind of like a one-dimensional line of information. If we add more columns, the vector becomes a second-rank tensor, more commonly referred to as a matrix. However, the extent of tensors does not stop at two dimensions. A third-rank tensor extends into the third dimension and holds even more information as a 3D array. One of the most interesting things about these tensors is that each tensor can transform each lower-rank tensor. Vector spaces are just arrows, but matrices serve as a way to transform them through its column vectors. Of course, third-rank tensors are more confusing, and their representation is basically infinite 3D cubes located in a 4D plane, which can transform matrices. Interesting, but exactly what do these do? Well, simply put, tensors can represent information that vectors alone cannot. For example, stress is a second-rank tensor that has nine values. The diagonal values indicate its normal stress, which give information on how much perpendicular force is applied in all three dimensions. The non-diagonal values represent its shear stress, which act parallel and tend to deform them into a parallelogram. Matrices are also just really good at containing data, which is why linear systems can be easily solved through conversion to row echelon form. But what about the 3D arrays that seem entirely impractical? Uses for third-rank tensors include spectroscopy and piezoelectricity as well as the transformation of matrices. These are all quite complex, however, so let's just use a simple example. If a person's data, like their position, weight, qualities, whatever, any data that can be contained in a matrix is presented like this clean and tidy 2D box. However, say that the qualities change with time. In this case, the data can be given an additional access to indicate what is happening at any given time. The key point is that vectors can never contain so much information in a single column. Alright, recap time. Tensors are a generalization of vectors used to convey more data where necessary.
Each tensor can transform each lower rank tensor. And finally, uses include stress matrices, piezoelectricity, and spectroscopy. Higher rank tensors contain more data and complexity, though these core concepts should not subtract from the importance of a vector, nor should you view tensors as a simple generalization of vectors. Simply, a vector is a type of tensor, with its own use and characteristics. So the next time you see this dude, just think that his name is synonymous with a first rank tensor.